Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore, music by Claude Sweeten. the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Pancakes hot off the griddle, a pat of delicious parquet margarine melting into each golden brown cake for extra flavor goodness, and then some syrup, jam, or honey to top them off. That's our idea of a good way to satisfy hungry appetites these crisp autumn days. And just as parquet margarine's fresh, delicate flavor adds such appetizing goodness to pancakes, so too parquet adds flavor that satisfies to many other foods. Millions of families enjoy parquet daily as a spread for bread, toast, rolls, and waffles. And parquet margarine is doubly welcome in these homes because it's such a fine aid to good nutrition. So high in food energy value, so dependable for vitamin A. Kraft adds 9,000 units of vitamin A to every pound of parquet. So for good nutrition, for flavor that satisfies, buy and serve parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Yes, Kraft makes parquet. <laughs> now, how goes it with the great Gildersleeve? Well, if the sounds coming from the Gildersleeve kitchen are any indication, things should be going very well indeed. It's Friday, the morning after Bertie's night out, and she's whipping up a fine breakfast of scrambled eggs and sausages with a little ragtime thrown in. He has no manners when he eats his food. He's fat and lazy and he's extremely rude, but if you don't give a feather or a thing, you may grow up to be a pig. I'm coming. You may grow up to be a pig. <laughs> Bertie, what's holding you up out there? Come in, Mr. Gillsleeve. Coming on a wing and a prayer. What's the matter? What's the matter with you, Bertie? What makes you so frisky? I don't know, Mr. Gillsleeve. I guess I'm just full of beans this morning. <laughs> Bertie's got the giggles. Oh, I have not. I'll bet she's in love. Oh, you go on, Miss Marjorie. I ain't been in love since uh, the last time. <laughs> when was that? Beyond the memory of man. <laughs> Finish up your prunes, Leroy. I got eggs waiting. Uh, what'd you do on your day off, Bertie? Paint the town? No, sir. I just fooled around. And then last night I went to the movies. Me and Lily Bee. Oh? She always goes to the movies. What'd you see, Bertie? Picture called Going My Way, Bing Crosby. Were you there? I didn't see you. Wasn't it wonderful? Oh, it sure was. Hey, Marge went to the movies. Oh, Mr. Gilsey, you got to see that picture. They got a little man there. I don't know who he is, but they got a little man. <laughs> Barry Fitzgerald, he's darling. He kills me, that man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how is it Marge gets to go to the movies when I don't? Of course, I've always thought Bing was darling. Of course, he's an older type than Van Johnson. Oh, well, if I may say so, my dear, some of us older types have more to offer than the younger ones. <laughs> Here, how is it Marge gets to go to the movies at night when I can't? I'm older than you. Yeah, she's an older type. <laughs> Perhaps when you get to high school, you'll be allowed to stay up at night, too. Oh, go soak your head. Yeah. <laughs> Finish your prunes, Leroy. Finish. Okay, Bertie, take it away. Leroy? Yeah? Here at Gildersleeve Manor, Leroy, we do not gulp our prunes. You told me to finish them. Neither do we spit our pits onto our plate. <laughs> You want me to swallow them? No. We simply remove them delicately one by one, young man, with the aid of a spoon, and lay them beside our saucer. I see I'm going to have to take you in hand. I wish somebody would. As for you, young lady, I'd like to speak to you about last evening. To me? Yes, you. Unc wants to speak to you. Go ahead, Unc. Yeah. <laughs> in my own good time. You didn't tell me, my dear, when you went out last night, you were planning to go to the movies. We weren't. It just came over us later. 
Who'd you go with? Everett, I suppose. None of your business. I thought you were never going to speak to him again. Well, that was yesterday. We uh, made it up at the movies. Uh, just as I suspected. You'll go to no more movies with Everett. I don't know why you're so mean about Everett. I don't like his father. <laughs> Everett is a very nice boy. And it may interest you to know that he's going to be a missionary. A missionary? When was that decided? On our way home from the picture last night. <laughs> <laughs> He's either going to be a missionary or a fighter pilot. Leroy, what would you like to your lunch? Would you like a peanut butter sandwich or a cheese or a Swiss cheese? What you want? Huh? Or would you rather be a mule? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, there she goes again. <laughs> <laughs> you really better see that picture, Mr. Gilsey. You'll love it. Oh, as a matter of fact, Bertie, I did see it. What? When? Last night, my dear. Leroy was asleep upstairs and... I was all alone here, so I sneaked out by myself. I ask you, is that justice? Everybody goes to the movies but me. Now, Leroy, your turn will come. Yeah. Miss Marjorie, I don't like to rush you, but I see Francis Ewing coming up the street. Oh, my goodness, Francie, I must be late. Oh, I am late. Hey, goodbye, Uncle Mort. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye, Leroy. Goodbye, Bertie. Leroy, say goodbye to your sister. Goodbye, Lord. Not with your mouth full. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget your lunch. Are you going to be warm enough in that thing? Well, that's one of them off. Leroy, you better be getting ready. Oh, uh, I'm glad you mentioned it, Unc. Mentioned what? I'm glad you reminded me. I might have forgotten. I've, I've got a thing here. What kind of a thing? A note. If I can get it out of my pocket. A note from whom? Stuck. I'd like to know who put chewing gum in my pocket. <laughs> Come on, let's have it. There. There you are, Unc. <laughs> note. What have you been doing? Sleeping on it? How long have you had this? Couple of days, I guess. Couple of days? I forgot. Uh, appears to have been open, too. It came open. Oh, it did. Yeah. Now, they aren't putting the stuff in those envelopes anymore. <laughs> That's probably the war. Yes. Summerfield Grammar School, Office of the Principal. Leroy, this is from Miss Goodwin. Yeah, I know. You haven't heard from her in quite a while, have you? <laughs> That's neither here nor there. Let's see. Dear Mr. Gildersleeve, it's been brought to my attention that Leroy and a number of his friends have been hanging around the school after hours and getting into trouble. I feel that a word from you... Leroy... <laughs> well, it's not my fault, I'm honest. The whole thing is Tony's fault. He keeps getting me into trouble. It's Tony. Who's Tony? A boy in my class. He sits right across from me and he keeps getting me into trouble. I tell him not to do it, but he keeps doing it. Bigger than me, too. He's bigger than me. He got left back twice. Now, wait a minute. Yes, sir? You're a big enough boy to know how to keep out of trouble and behave yourself? Yes, sir. I don't know what we're going to do about you, Leroy. I really don't. It's a problem, all right. <laughs> I suppose I really ought to spend more time with you. Yeah, maybe if you'd spend more time with me, I wouldn't get into so much trouble. Well, I've always been meaning to. I would if I weren't so busy. You're not busy now, Unc. What do you mean? Well, you haven't got a job. You don't do anything but sit around. I have a great many things I'm considering, Leroy, and it takes all my time. Now, you get along to school. <laughs> yes, sir. Here's your life, Leroy. Thanks, Bertie. <laughs> Goodbye, Unc. Yes, yes. Confounded, Bertie. I'm going to have to do something about Leroy. Oh, he ain't a bad boy, Mr. Gilsley. Yeah, I know, Bertie. What is it that makes boys get into mischief? Well, maybe it's like it was in that Bing Crosby picture, Mr. Gilsley. Maybe they need an older man to sort of give them a hand. Yeah, I suppose you're right. You know where that Mr. Crosby there, he got all them boys together and taught them how to sing like a choir so they quit stealing turkeys? Yes, sir. Bertie, I think you're on the right track. A choir, eh? By George. I'll get them all together tomorrow morning. <laughs> Okay, Piggy, this time you're the center and I'll carry the ball. Leroy, you try to break up the play. Gosh, Tony, when do I get to carry the ball? When I say so. Now, all set? Leroy! Oh, Leroy! Hey, Yunk, you want to get in the game? Come on, Unc. Not just now, thank you. Come here a minute, please, Leroy. Oh, what for, Unc? I told you we're having a game. Tony and Piggy Come and... Come here, please, my man. Oh, for corn's sake. Time out for a minute, fellas. Don't be talking to him all day, Leroy. Okay. What do you want, Unc? Snappy, will you? I'll not make it snappy. I have something to say, and I'll take as much time as I require. Who's that boy that said don't be talking all day? Him? That's Tony. He's the best forward passer in the 7B. Oh, so that's Tony. And I want to talk to him, too. I want to talk to all of you. 
What are you going to do, give us a lecture? No, my boy, not going to give you a lecture. I'm going to try to guide your activities, give you something wholesome to do. It'll be fun, Leroy. We're having fun. This will be more fun. <laughs> You'll enjoy it, all of you. I'm going to teach you to sing. Oh, uh, not on Saturday. It's a fine day for it. Now call the other boys over here. But, Uncle, we don't want to sing. We're playing football. Leroy, will you please do as I ask? Okay. Shall I tell them what you want them for? No, just get them over here. I'll tell them. Okay. Hey, fellas. More lung power, Leroy. <laughs> I said so. Uh, <laughs> uh, come here, Tony. Come over here, Piggy. I want to tell you something. Offer, oh, please. Okay, Mr. Gilder, please. I don't think Tony is going to like this, Uncle. Uh, we'll see, Leroy. At least I want your cooperation. You understand? Well, boys, good morning. Oh, hi, Mr. Gildersleeve. Piggy, and you're Tony, I presume. I'm Leroy's uncle. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, boys, now that I've got you all together, uh, football is all very well. But if you're going to keep out of mischief, you need other interests, more wholesome interests. And one of the finest pastimes there is for boys is singing. Uh, it develops the lungs. Well, let's get it over with, fellas. What do you want us to do, Unc? We'll sing a jolly song. We'll sing it in harmony. Doesn't that sound like fun? Well, it is fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, first, I'll give you your notes. Leroy, you sing do. Do. Come on, Leroy. Josh. Do! <laughs> cut it out, Doc. Yeah, quiet, fellas. Sing the note again, Leroy. Do! Do! <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Now, Piggy, you sing so, huh? Mm hmm. Do so. I can't, Mr. Gillersleeve. Uh, let me hear you try. So. So. That's Leroy's note, Piggy. <laughs> Do, so. Now sing so. So. <laughs> You're not trying, Piggy. Yes, I am, Mr. Gillersleeve. On some more now, huh? So. So. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Well, now, I don't know. The music teacher at school says I'm tone deaf. That's right, Uncle. That's right. He can't sing for sour apples. <laughs> you better forget the whole thing, Uncle. It'll sound terrible. I don't care how it sounds. We're going to sing anyway. Piggy, you sing do on any note you please. Leroy will take the soul, and Tony can take... Tony, where are you going? I'm going home. You can't go home. We're just starting to sing, fellow. I didn't come over to sing. So long, Leroy. So long, Piggy. Come here, young man. Oh, wait a sec, Tony. I'm coming with you. Piggy! Wait a sec, Tony. I'm coming too. No, you're not, Leroy. You're going to stay here and sing. But, um... You're going to sing whether you like it or not. But by George, if I ever run into that Bing Crosby, what a faker. <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. Shop early is good advice these days. Not only does it save your own time and your food dealer's valuable time, but by shopping early, you're more likely to get those choice foods that are always in big demand. Now, that's especially true of parquet margarine, for delicious, nourishing parquet is a first choice spread for bread with millions of American families. Of course, one reason so many people want parquet is because its fresh, delicate flavor makes bread, rolls, pancakes, and waffles taste so good. But equally important is the wonderful nourishment that parquet provides so economically. You see, parquet is one of our very best energy foods, and it's also a good source of vitamin A. Kraft adds 9,000 units of this important vitamin to every pound of parquet. So tomorrow, be sure you shop early for delicious, nourishing parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Remember, Kraft makes parquet. Now let's get back to the great Gildersleeve and his campaign to reform the bad boys of Summerfield. Undiscouraged by his musical experiment, he's enlisted the aid of Judge Hooker, and together they're on their way to the drugstore to talk to Mr. Peavy. But uh, let's see what's going on there before they arrive. Oh, Masterful Comics is no good. I like Commando Comics. You're nuts, Leroy. Commando Comics is corny. Captain Magic is the best. Ah, Captain Magic is nothing but pictures of dames. 
Hey, Tony, isn't Commando Comics the best? Nah, Captain Magic, huh, Tony? They both stink. Come on, guys, let's get out of here. Well, now, that's the best suggestion I've heard so far. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, guys, I got some money. Let's see the candy, Mr. Peavy. Mm, uh, is this for yourself or for a friend? Are you kidding? <laughs> yes, I was. You can see all I've got right there on the counter, Leroy. How much are these? They're all the same price, five cents. All nationally advertised brands. That is, all but the peppermint. I put that up myself. How much dough have you got, Leroy? A dime. I can buy two kinds. Oh, you can't get anything decent for a nickel. Let's match and the winner gets a soda. Okay. You got a coin to match with? No. Say, Doc, let me have a nickel for a second, will you? I don't encourage gambling in here, young man. Oh, this ain't gambling. Oh, we're just gonna match to see who gets the soda, Mr. Peavy. It isn't gambling, Mr. Peavy. Come on, Doc. Be a good guy and cough up a nickel. No, I won't. Okay. Come on, Leroy. We'll spend your dime over at Beckman's. Come on, Piggy. Okay. Beckman's is better than Peavy's anyway. Sure. Beckman's is better than Peavy's. Beckman's is better than Peavy's. Now, go on. Go to Beckman's. You can give all your trade to Beckman's. Beckman's is better than Peavy's. Beckman's is better than Peavy's. Jiggers, last one out to Rotten Egg. Oh, what's this dickens? Leroy. Those are the brakes, kids. Yes, uh, I'll deal with you later, Leroy. Uh, darn kids will wind up gangsters. Well, <laughs> much obliged, gentlemen. Now, what can I do for you? Huh? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, we got a proposition I think will interest you, Peavy. From what we've just seen, I'm sure it will. Is uh, this a business proposition? No, this is more what you might call a service to the community. Now, we know you're a public-spirited man, Peavy. I've made my contribution to the war chest, Judge. Oh, this is different. Stop this... beating around the bush, Horace. Peavy, we're organizing a boys' club. Something to keep the boys of Summerfield off the streets. Worst place there is for the boys, Peavy. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I, I'd be more interested in a project to keep them away from my magazine stand. Yeah, well, this club will do the trick. It'll keep them off the streets, keep them out of pool rooms, drug stores. The boys will just stay in their club where they can't bother anybody. The way you describe it, it sounds a little like a jail. <laughs> Not at all, Peavy. They'll love it. Why, sure. Chief of Police has promised to cooperate. Besides, we're putting in a Parcheesi board. Mm, good game, Parcheesi. Quite a lot of skill to it. It all depends on where you put your blockades now. I you haven't got time to listen to your Parcheesi system, Peavy. <laughs> We've got to organize this club. Can we uh, count on your support? Uh, just what would that involve, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, nothing financial, Peavy. Floyd Munson has given us the place over his barbershop for a club room. The judge and I are taking care of all the details. All we want from you, Peavy, is some refreshments. Could you bring over a few Coca-Colas? Yeah, I think I could make that contribution. Yeah, we're all set then, Peavy. Judge, we can open her up tonight. By golly, Gildy, I believe we can. We owe it to the boys, men. How about it, Peavy? Can you come to the grand opening? I'll try, Mr. Gildy, please. You'll try nothing. You'll be there and bring the refreshments. How does the flag look there, Floyd? Fine. Looks like a regular club room now. Yeah, the flag lends a patriotic note. The boys ought to like that. Don't you think so, Judge? You bet. Yeah, I think we've got everything just about ready. You might pull that table over in the middle of the room, Floyd, under the light, uh -huh. so the boys can see to play their game. Uh, I'll give you a hand with it, Floyd. Sure. I suppose we ought to get this piano tuned sometime. What's the matter with that piano? Perfectly good piano. A few cigarette burns don't affect the tone. Unc, how long do I have to sit here? Oh, you don't have to sit there, Leroy. You can get up and move around if you want to. Thanks. When can I go? You can't go. I've told you that. Oh, gee. Listen, Leroy, if Judge Hooker, Mr. Munson, and I can give up a whole Saturday afternoon and evening to fixing up a club room for you fellas, you can darn well stay here and enjoy it. You understand? Okay. Have a fig Newton, Leroy. No, oh, thanks. Take one. <laughs> Ye gods, we're only doing this for you boys. But there aren't any boys here, only me. Well, I don't know what's keeping them. Did you pass the word around as I told you to? Yeah, it got around all right. Did you invite Piggy? Yep. Tony? Yep. Well, if Tony comes, the others will come, won't they? I guess so. What did Tony say when you asked him? He said he wouldn't come near the place with a 40-foot pole. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, boy's a bad influence, all right. 
proves the need for this kind of thing. Hey, here comes somebody. We got a customer. Hello. Anybody up there? Oh, it's Gates. Come on up. It's the chief of police. The chief of police? Yes, yeah, you needn't be alarmed, Leroy. <laughs> the chief has agreed to sponsor our little club. Isn't that fine? Are you kidding? Uh, well, I see you brought a customer with you, chief. Yes, yes. I, I found this little fella hanging around outside. Come along, Sonny. You've got nothing to be scared of. Peggy! Hi, Leroy. What happened? I didn't see him coming. You did? <laughs> well, I, uh, I see you've got the place fixed up real nice. Well, it looks fine. Piggy, you know everybody here, Mr. Munson. Hi, Piggy. About time you came in for a haircut, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and Judge Hooker, you know him. Hello, Piggy. Have a fig Newton. <laughs> no, thanks. You better have one, Piggy. <laughs> oh, okay. Take two. They're small. Take two, Pig. <laughs> now, Piggy, we want you boys to feel entirely at home here. This place is yours, and we want you to regard it as such. Am I right, gentlemen? Right. right. Take your feet off the table, Leroy. <laughs> we men are here only to help you have a good time, boys. <laughs> We'd like you to regard us as your big brothers. Is that understood? Uh, yes, sir. Now, what would you like to do? I don't know. We got all kinds of equipment here. Would you like to play Parcheesi, huh? Well, uh... Sure, sure. There's nothing like a good, lively game of Parcheesi. How about it? If you say so. Well, wait a minute. Maybe he don't want to play Parcheesi. Certainly. We got other games. How would you like to play Pin the Tail on the Donkey? Oh, for corn's sake. <laughs> Quiet, you. Uh, of course, if we play pin the tail on the donkey, we'll have to ask the judge to step outside or somebody might pin the tail on him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't just sit there, fellas. What do you want to play? If you'd like to know what we'd really like to play... Yes? We'd like to go down to the Y and play basketball with the other fellas. After all the work we went to here? Now, Gildy, we don't want to force the boys to remain here if they don't want to. Well, doggone it. Of course, if they go now, they won't be allowed to come back. That's right. If they go now, they won't get any Coca-Cola. That's right. If they go now, they'll be missing a lot of dandy fun. That's right. But the choice is up to them. What do you say, boys? We'll, we'll go! go. Oh. <laughs> well, go on, then, both of you. Come on, Piggy! Uh, go ahead, get out of here. And don't come back. The darn kid, you try to do something for them, and what thanks do you get? My goodness, what's going on up here? Peavy. Hello, Peavy. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm late, gentlemen, but I brought the Coca-Cola. Hey, I could go for a Coke right now. Oh, oh, but it's easier for the boys, Floyd. Nuts to the boys. Let's open them up. Well, I don't understand, Mr. Gildersleeve. Seems our little club is something of a flop, Peavy. Evidently not good enough for him. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. I think it looks very attractive. Got an opener, Peavy? Mm, right here. Oh, look out, look out, Floyd. It's running over. Uh, grab it, Floyd. Oh. That's the stuff. Uh, open one for me, Peavy. Oh, boy, that's good. I believe I'll have one, too, Peavy. There you are, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, that's more like it. You know, I'm kind of glad those kids left. Me too. They kind of throw a damper on things. You know what I mean? I don't know what's the matter with boys these days. They don't know how to have fun. Oh, well, speaking of fun, uh, what would you gentlemen say to a few hands of pinochle? Got a deck down in the shop. Good idea. What do you say, Peavy? Uh-oh. I'm afraid I ought to be getting home, gentlemen. Bushwah, Peavy. Stick around. Hey, Judge, open a bottle for the peeve. One coat coming up. Yeah. Uh, no, really, gentlemen, I've got to drive. Yes, I, uh... you've got to. <laughs> For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. Come on, Floyd. You play the piano in a broken down sort of way. How about a little harmony? Yeah, yeah, a little harmony. Sure. Yeah. 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 Stop. Now, wait a minute. Come over here, Peavy. Now, I'll be the conductor. Says who? Quiet, you. Now, Judge, here's your note. Do. No. <laughs> yeah, a little bushy. <laughs> That's right. Now, hold on to it. No. Floyd, you take um, me. Yeah, that's your note. I'll take, uh, so. And Peavy, you take, uh, do. Can you make it? Do. <laughs> well, congratulations. Oh, and the chief. Chief, can you? Do. Great. There is a tavern in the town, in the town. <laughs> oh, no, Peavy. Now, wait a minute. Falling as 
as I think of my lost pearl. And my broken heart is calling, calling for you, dear. Uh, hey, that wasn't bad. Yeah, no, I wouldn't say that. There he goes. <laughs> Say, this is funny, you know what? We ought to do this more often. Yeah, we ought to do it once a week. Tuesday nights, that's when the wife plays dead. Well, Fridays is better for me. Oh? How about you, Peavy? What's a good night for you? There's no such thing as a good night for me. <laughs> oh, no, that's no attitude, Peavy. We gotta do something about Peavy's attitude, fellas. <laughs> it hasn't been right lately. Yeah, I've been noticing. Peavy, you're a bad boy. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Say that again. <laughs> I'll tell you what, fellas. We'll call it the Jolly Boys Social Club. For men only. No women. And if any kids come around, we'll throw them out in their ear. Huh? Hooray <laughs> for the Jolly Boys. Yeah. There is a tavern in the town. In the town. Phoebe. And there my two All right, love Phoebe. Have it your own way. Him down a and drink his wine with Well, folks, Gildersleeve was kind of silly again tonight. I guess he had the right idea there, but he went at it in the wrong way. Even Gildersleeve ought to know that Leroy is better off playing basketball down at the Y. In other words, the way to help out the boys in our community is to support the organizations that know how to handle the problem. It's a big one right now because there are a lot of kids knocking around the streets these days with no one to take care of them or supervise them. Their fathers are in the service and their mothers are helping in the war plants. In almost all communities now, the agencies that look after the welfare of youngsters are supported by a cooperative organization called the National War Fund. Of course, that's not all it does. It also supports the clinics and hospitals, visiting nurses associations, provides special care for crippled and undernourished children, and many other local services. This is in addition to the important work the War Fund does all over the world. It supports thousands of clubs for our servicemen and women, and our merchant seamen, sends aid to American prisoners of war. It includes the relief organizations of our fighting allies. It's a mighty big thing. I don't see how they accomplish all they do, but you can see they need money. So when one of your neighbors calls on you to ask for a contribution to the National War Fund, remember what he represents and be generous. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Music on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs>